Hi, the SI Meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Friday, January 11th. A lot going on from the sun to the stratosphere. A lot of changes coming for the Mid-Atlantic region over the next seven days or so. This weekend looks unseasonably mild, but then Tuesday and Wednesday will bring in some chillier air and then perhaps even colder air by the latter part of next week. Before we get to the uh, conditions here on Earth, let's take a look at the latest image of the sun. We talked earlier this week about the uh, sun becoming more active, at least in terms of sunspots. A couple of areas of interest right now. Here's one area right now, a rather large sunspot region that is directly facing the Earth. But this is even of more interest, perhaps, because it's uh, really a humongous, kind of a double area of sunspots. And that, too, is rotating in, uh, in this direction right here. So it will be facing the Earth directly over the next several days. We'll continue to monitor this, especially it is showing some signs of activity. There haven't been any eruptions in the last 24, 48 hours or so, but uh, this certainly is showing some signs of uh, possible solar flare or even coronal mass ejection uh, activity over the next few days while it will be uh, in a direct path with the Earth. So we'll monitor this at the SIweather.com. Meanwhile, back to Earth. Here is the latest uh, weather warnings map put out by NOAA, the National Weather Service. I thought I'd show this as kind of a good way to show what's going on here, the transition going on uh, pretty much nationwide in terms of the cold air returning. All of these pinks here represent snow warnings, either winter storm watches or winter storm warnings out across the northern Rockies, northern plains. A little bit of an area here up in Minnesota where there's freezing rain or ice warnings. All of this associated with Arctic air starting to pour in the region. The frontal system that we'll see in a moment on the surface front is kind of cutting through right here, cutting through uh, Colorado. Winter storm watches and warnings just behind it. High wind warnings ahead of it as that cold air pours into the central Rockies. It's already inundated the uh, western states. Southern California is already uh, <clears throat> quite chilly for this time of the year. In fact, the coldest air of the year. Right now, LAX airport, it's 47 degrees, and they can have some freeze and f frost problems late tonight, early tomorrow, in some of the coastal valley valleys across the uh, California coastal region. But again, this is um, kind of showing here what's going on here. The colder air is making its way across <coughs> excuse me, the country, and it'll finally reach the eastern states on Tuesday and Wednesday, the first stages of the cool down, but even colder weather is likely during the latter part of next week. Well, here's the latest surface map, and here's that Arctic front cutting through Colorado right now. Temperatures in the mid-30s of Denver. That'll be the high for the day. They'll drop through the 20s this afternoon as that cold air pours in. It's already very chilly in Southern California. Cold air pouring into the Dakotas. This whole region up here in the uh, across the Dakotas is in, in store for quite a bit of snow, probably uh, this region right here. Over the next 12 to 24 hours, several inches of snow can fall here and accumulate as that colder air pours in. Meanwhile, there's a frontal system out of the Ohio Valley with quite a bit of rainfall associated with it. Some of that rain will move into the Mid-Atlantic region later on this afternoon, and that will continue into the overnight hours. Fog will become an issue here also across the uh, I-95 car from D.C. to Philly to New York City late tonight and early tomorrow. I expect some patchy fog to develop all along this I-95 corridor. <clears throat> well, here's the current radar loop of the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic region. Not much going on right now along the big cities, but there are some pockets of uh, light rain starting to show up here. Most of the rainfall will hold off till this afternoon. Anytime from the early mid-afternoon hours, there can be some light rain or drizzle from D.C. to Baltimore to Philadelphia and New York City. That will continue well into the nighttime hours, and again, fog will form late tonight and, and, and last in the early hours on Saturday in much of the I-95 corridor. Well, let's, let's take a look at a couple of computer forecast maps in the near term. This is from last night's Zero-Z GFS model run for tomorrow morning, and then we'll look at Sunday morning. The warmer air kind of depicted here by this red line just on the doorstep of the Mid-Atlantic region, southwesterly winds on the backside of this high pressure. It's actually like a Bermuda high setting up uh, like a summertime situation, moving off the east coast and then warm air right out of the Gulf of Mexico headed into the mid-Atlantic region. Rainfall from later this afternoon through tonight is now off the east coast for the most part. Tomorrow morning will start off damp, 
Certainly some clouds and fog up and down the I-95 corridor. That should burn off and allow for partial sunshine during the afternoon hours with unseasonably mild conditions. Well, by Sunday, which will probably turn out to be the warmest day of the weekend, that warm air as depicted by this uh, iso isotherm right here is flooded into the Mid-Atlantic region all the way now into the Mid-Atlantic region. Sunday, again, looks like the warmest day, easily reaching the 60s in Washington, D.C., perhaps a low to mid-60s even in Philadelphia and well up in the 50s across the New York City region. Notice a solid band of uh, precipitation here just on the doorstep in the Ohio Valley come Sunday morning. That is the transition area from cold air moving in to the unseasonably mild air across the East Coast. And again, we'll cool off quite a bit by Tuesday here in the Mid-Atlantic region. It'll be much chillier Tuesday and Wednesday and perhaps even colder latter part of next week. Well, speaking of the latter part of next week, let's kind of switch gears a little bit and go to the European Ensemble model run from last night for the end of next week. We've been talking about the stratospheric warming event that's been ongoing and impacting global weather patterns, and it appears as if we'll uh, transition into a colder weather pattern here in the mid-Atlantic region latter part of next week. These are the uh, 850 um, isotherms for the latter part of next week. I'm going to show Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night, for all of these from the RaleighWeather.com website. Notice all the blues here and, and colors uh, north of this line right here. This is kind of the freezing line here in the lowest part of the atmosphere. Again, this is the 850 millibar temperature pattern here. just want to point out that this is a very cold air mass by Thursday night. We definitely transition into the colder air by Thursday. And notice what happens beyond this point, according to the European Ensemble run, and we'll, we'll kind of walk right through this right now. Again, this is Thursday night. Now let's jump ahead 24 hours. Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. The bottom line I'm trying to make here is that once the cold gets established, again, this is Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. It looks like, at least according to the last night's European Ensemble run, it'll kind of stick around for a while. So there's some uh, definite signs that once we get cold, we'll stay cold at least towards the latter part of next week into the following weekend. We'll, of course, update that whole transition uh, over the next few days here at the SIWeather.com. That's it for now on the SI Meteorologist Paul Dorian.